Hi, I'm Jake Bresson with Bresson Painting. Today I'm going to do a quick video for you guys uh, about spraying with an HVLP gun, going over the just the super basics with this. Um, if you guys are beginner sprayers looking for some tips on dialing in your your knobs up here that who knows what they do. This video is for you. Stay tuned. What is what is an HVLP? Uh, it's a high volume, low pressure system. You know, it's not your airless sprayer. You're not going to spray your entire exterior of your house with this. What you are going to spray with this is is probably going to be your interior, not your interior walls, not your interior ceiling, but your interior trim and your doors. You could use this exterior, you know, on on some spindles on your deck. You could use it on some wrought iron fences, etc. Things like that, uh, fine finish things and small things. Um, this is going to be this is going to be much more efficient than brushing things out or you know enrolling, and it's going to leave an awesome finish. These these systems here are un unparalleled to anything else out there. You know, even if you set up a fine finish tip on your airless sprayer, you're not going to achieve the finish that you can from an HVLP system. These just atomize the paint differently and lay out so much nicer than any other spray system out there um, th that I'm aware of, any other spray system out there that I'm aware of. So let's get right down to it, how to operate it. I've got two different guns, one for latex or waterborne products and then one for uh, solvent-based products. And this one here, this is my water, this is, there's, there's no strong odor there, this is just my waterborne product gun. So. Uh, there it is. I just I leave it set in some water. Um, I usually after I'm done cleaning, I leave water in the gun. That might rust parts, but uh, I'd rather do that than have latex or you know some kind of waterborne acrylic something set up on the inside and ruin my gun. So that's what I do, and I do take apart and clean these every now and then. I don't do it after every job. Typically, um, to clean out, I just run water down through and shoot it out. And you don't need to do a reverse. You don't need to run water through here and down that way. You don't need to do the reverse clean out. Um, the instructions that come with the gun say just to do it that way. If I don't feel that I have it clean enough from in the sink, I'll fill it up with water, connect it to my... Uh, it's a Titan cap spray, so I'll connect it to the unit here, and I'll just spray wa you know, water out until it comes out clear, and then I'm good to go. So there's that. All right, so the next stage here of the gun that I'm just gonna go over with really quick is because it's right here, it's obvious. Um, the little feeder tube that comes down here, you can, on my gun, you can adjust it. So if you're spraying upwards, you can adjust it so the feeder tube is back in the pot there, um, or you can adjust it to where if you're spraying downwards, and you're not getting enough material there, you can turn it forward. So that's kind of handy. I don't know if all guns have these or not. <clears throat> and in fact, if you have an HVLP system, it might be set up with a remote pot. You might have a gravity fed on the top. It could be completely different. But the one thing that is very similar on almost all HVLP guns is going to be your material flow knob and your airflow knob on the back here. And they might be located in different areas, but they're going to do the same thing. Um, so there's really no easy way to explain this. I will go over the quick basics with, uh, with you, with my knowledge of it. Um, you want to have your airflow as low as possible when you're spraying any, any coating out of the HBL, HVLP. Um, your airflow, you want to have it as low as possible. That the higher it is, um, yes, you're going to be atomizing you're going to be atomizing differently. There's going to be a lot of overspray that's created with, with more air. And overspray ultimately uh, results in more dust, which ultimately results in a less, fine, less of a fine finish there. You're going to achieve not, you're not going to achieve your highest results um, with your air set too high. So um, once, you, once you have your material in here and you're spraying, <clears throat> you want to dial your air back as low as it can go while still atomizing the product that you're spraying. Um, secondly, your material, your material flow knob here. I always start with mine completely off and I start with my air always not completely off because then nothing comes out. I'll turn my air up a little bit and then just slowly start bringing my material flow knob out until I'm getting the amount of material that I want and and then once I get the amount, I'll start turning up the air a little bit. I'll usually just crank it and then bring it back. That's the easiest thing to do. Um, because that way you know what you can get and then you bring it back down to where it should be. Um, but with the material knob, I'll keep it all the way off and just bring that out. 
Um, if you come all the way out with it and work your way in, you're you're gonna no, you're gonna waste you're gonna waste a bunch of material. And then you know the best thing to start with here when you're practicing or when you're dialing in your gun is get a piece of cardboard. I've got a couple sheets of drywall set up back here that I've left over from a project that I'm gonna use. So um, when you're doing this, you're gonna run out of space quick if you start with your material way back. So start with your material off and work your way back out. All right, next thing, guys, uh, is your is your trigger pull. Um, this gun here has a two-stage trigger. I can pull back here and just get air out, and I can pull all the way back here to get my to get my material out. So the other thing here, besides your air and your material knobs, um, is going to be your you know wh where you deliver your paint from. And I can change my patterns up here. I can I can get the biggest pattern there, um, and then I can turn my knob here, and I can get a vertical. A vertical oval and a horizontal oval and then a circle and then if I want to I can turn I can turn this way out here um, and that's gonna make my pattern as small as it can get so if I'm sh shooting a circle here and I want a nice big circle I'll crank this here um, I don't know righty tighty there I guess and that's gonna be my biggest pattern your gun might vary slightly and then I'm gonna turn it all the way out and that's gonna be my tiniest little pinpoint pattern. Um, and your patterns are going to, everything is going to be dependent on your viscosity. If you thinned it out and use the cup here, um, you get your ratio right when you mixed it and you tested everything and it is up to spec for the product and it is up to spec for your gun and your projector set and everything is gelling like it should be all across the boards. Um, if you don't have your product thinned out, if you're not using the right needle, things are going to vary. Um, if you're just a weekend warrior out there and you're gonna, you want to throw a stain or something on it, keep watching here. You know This is going to be great for you. If you're a pro, you might pick something up here, but this is, this is really for the novice beginner guy out there because I couldn't find anything when I got into it and that's what this is for. The HVLP is very very versatile like I said all the different adjustments that you have the spray pattern size uh, whereas your airless sp spray system I mean that's that's it you just you get your fan you can you know you can turn your fan either vertical or horizontal and then when you change your when you actually change your tips on your airless gun it's gonna it's gonna change your spray pattern you know from a from a six inch fan width down to a three inch fan width there's not much variation there from an airless gun with an HVLP you can you can get you can get so much you can customize a lot here with one of these so I've got my mask my respirator here if I put this on though I'm not going to be able to talk to you guys so um, I'm spraying right now in my garage and that brings me to another tip here another little pro tip that I want to throw out at you guys if you guys are a weekend warrior and you're outside you're spraying your cabinet outside in your yard uh, and you're you know you went out and you bought a $200 HVLP gun and you're like oh this is gonna give me some great smooth glossy glassy finish it will but the pollen the pollen and the debris that's out there when you're spraying outside is gonna come down and it is just gonna it's gonna annihilate your finish I don't want to tell you that you shouldn't do it. What you should do though is you should spray it in your garage, keep your garage door open, vent everything out for a little bit. If you've got a window in your garage, open that too, get a little cross breeze, and then close it up. And make sure, make sure you, you know, use a leaf blower or something, blow everything out of your garage before you start your project. Uh, keeping debris away from your project is key. I cannot stress that enough. Keeping contaminants away from your project is going to give you that pro finish that you're after. They don't call it a shop finish for nothing. It is, it is very hard to achieve a shop finish on, a, on the field. You know, when you're out in the field, it's difficult. All right, so my product in here, I've already got it thinned down with the appropriate solvent, and it, is, it should be ready to go. It's actually been sitting in here for a day or two, so hopefully, it's, hopefully we're still good.
there you go, the BP resin painting. Subscribe right here from the Titan Cap Spray HVLP system. I'm not endorsed by anybody. Uh, I've got no sponsorships. This is just all my opinion. Um, in fact, just to be safe. I won't even put my logo out here today. This is just me, real talk, out in my garage. Uh, so there you go. That's that's about as as uh, far down as I can dial my HVLP, as fine as I can get it. You know, the closer you get, um, I could I could turn back my material some, cut it back, and I might be able to get closer to you know a sharpie point. Um, but with this product, the way it's thinned out right now, spraying onto spraying on the drywall, that's about as as good as I can get it. Um, I will say. You know, I'll, I'll keep playing here. I'll, I'll show you guys. So, is, if you guys notice that there, then I turn my fan pattern um, to the vertical, and I really opened up my material there. And I don't know if you guys can see this in the video, but that material's on there pretty heavy right now. If this wasn't uh, such a such a porous substrate here, soaking it in, if that was on wood or something with a prime undercoat on it, that would probably be running and sagging. So you want to be careful um, when you are playing around with a pizza box here that you know that you're going to use to spray your pattern onto uh, and get the hang of everything. You're going to use it to dial in your gun before you get started on your actual project. Um, it's going to vary a little bit. You might be you might be putting it on too heavy, and you're not going to know that if you're a novice. Um, so just be aware of that. You might switch over then to your you know your cabinet doors and start spraying. And if they're in an upright position, you might get some sags on that. So. Uh, even after you think you get everything dialed in, when you do switch over and you're spraying your material onto your project, uh, just still do a little test spot on it, just to make sure that you, everything's dialed in the way that you want it. All right, I'm gonna play around here a little bit more. I'll show you guys some other spray patterns, and we'll see how fine I can get I can get uh, get this dialed in too. I might have just sprayed everything out of here, uh, and I really don't want to add any more in for the sake of this video. But you know, that's it. I'm, I'll do. I will definitely do more videos here using an HVLP gun in the future. But there's the basics to get you going. The most important things that you're going to want to make sure of before you get going is that is your material thin and is it thinned properly? Meaning, if you're using a waterborne, um, you know, you either thin it then with a glycol, which is you know your M1 paint additives, or you're using water. And if you're using an oil-based product or you're using paint thinner, does the manufacturer recommend that you actually use mineral spirits um, or? Do they say you know use, that you need to cut it with a lacquer thinner? Um, these are things that you need to find out from your paint retailer, and you need to find out you know on the label what what you're going to thin it with, and then what your cleanup's going to be, and then you're going to want to look if your gun came with uh, any thinning ratios. You know, for this guy here, this came with with my Titan cap spray, and it's got a whole page in the in the user manual about um, you know the ratios, and then what you you know what what your paint needs to do within 10 seconds after you pour it in here um, so really thinning it down is very important and then doing some practice sprays here so that you don't have these huge spray marks here with fingers like I like I had uh, you know leaving some trails um, you want to make sure you have an even coverage you don't want to have all this overspray out here from this pattern you know you want a nice tight spray pattern all that overspray there is just going to throw dust in the air and contaminants and ruin your finish 
Um, if you're spraying a clear, that, that can be really difficult. Maybe you want to start with something else before you do a clear. Um, if you're doing a stain, you know, is it a wiping stain? How heavy do you want to put that stain on? Maybe you want your material really, really, you know, just really light. Or maybe you do. You want to throw it on really, really heavy so you get all your grain evenly coated in your stain and, and wipe it off quick while you're working. Um, these are all things to take into consideration and, you know, your gun might be different than mine, but that's the basics of it. It's, it's going to be the airflow and the material flow. And like I said, I always start with my airflow, you know, turned down, but not, not that low that you're spitting. And I definitely start with my material off and I just work it out until I find material amount that I want. And then you can go, go with your air and you just play with it. So that's, that's all I can tell you. It, it might sound intimidating and confusing and maybe I didn't do the best job relaying this information to you about how to use it, but I promise you that if you get one of these in your hand and your product is thin properly, um, you can do this. You can figure it out on your own. Uh, it's, a, it's a good afternoon project if you've got a dresser or something you're trying to finish and you want to get a, a really nice finish on there. Um, if you can find one of these for a good price uh, for weekend projects, do it. Do it. with you guys is you know you saw how close I got here on this this is going to be very different if you've used an air, airless uh, spray system the HVLP is going to vary a lot you can you know instead of your 6 to 12 inches that you're used to with your airless system and fanning it out on the ends with your HVLP you're going to want to keep working at a 90 degree angle um, you know meaning that at the ends you don't want to fan it out you want to just go straight out um, and also, instead of that 6 to 12 inch radius that you're working from there, you're going to want to be anywhere from 1 to one to 9 inches with your H HVLP. You know, typically you're about 6 inches when you're running one of these. And like I said, it's not, it's not meant for your whole house, it's not meant for your walls. This is meant for your detail stuff, your doors. Lay those doors out really nice, make them look like they're glassed. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if this video helped you out in any way, shape, or form, click like, hit subscribe. I will catch you in the next video.